Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today on Faith to Live By. This is Sue Taylor. Have you ever felt as if you are in a dry, in a thirsty land, a desert place, so to speak? Psalm 63 is a wonderful psalm of comfort and guidance for the weary. It is a psalm of David while he was in the desert of Judah. In verse 1, he cries out, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longs for thee, in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. While David was alone in the wilderness, he was evidently reminiscing of the time when God had been very real to him in the sanctuary. You know, he still desired the reality of God's presence that he had known in the past. He said, O God, thou art my God. God was personal to David. From the depths of his soul, he cried out, My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longs for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Once we have known and been touched by God, he is the only one who can satisfy, no matter how dry our desert of life becomes. You know, there are many hungers and thirsts in the world today. Some people hunger for position and some for power. Others hunger for pleasure, for love, for acceptance. People are searching every, everywhere for things that will satisfy. But inner satisfaction does not come through things. Jesus, however, assures us that the hunger and the, the thirst of our soul can be satisfied. In fact, it's a promise, beloved. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That's the key. What are you hungering for? Inner fulfillment comes from him. David said, early will I seek him. When we read the word of God, we must seek him on its pages. When we enter the prayer closet, we must become quiet enough to hear him speak to us. We must not stop short of anything less than hearing God himself. Today, are you seeking inner peace? Are you longing for something to satisfy you can be satisfied. You can have inner fulfillment as you seek and find it in Jesus Christ. He said, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. David was alone in the wilderness when he prayed this prayer in Psalm 63. He said, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Even though David was lonely, he didn't feel sorry for himself. Someone has said that although David was in the wilderness, there was no wilderness in his heart. He let his thoughts wander back to the time when God had been real to him in the sanctuary. Maybe you are listening to me today, beloved, and there is you feel dry and you feel thirsty spiritually and your mind wanders back to a time when God was so real to you. Think about David. You know, now that David was in this wilderness place, he wanted a fresh revelation of God. The wilderness is really a great place to be, to be. God will take us there many times so that we can get fresh anointing, that we can get a fresh vision and we can have a freshness that uh, that we need because our souls sometimes just get dry and they get barren spiritually. Beloved, it is so important to have fresh revelations of God, times of refreshing in prayer and praise. It is a wonderful thing to remember what God has done in the past, but it should challenge us to experience God's power and glory in a fresh way today. Remember that God and faith is not satisfied with history. It wants to see God in the current situations and circumstances of our life. Remember that God is a God of the now, the great I am. What has he said to you today? What is he doing for you now? God's power is available for our every need. Pa Paul wrote, I pray that you will begin to understand how incredibly great his power is to help those who believe him. 
His power to work in us goes beyond what we can even ask or think, beloved. Now unto him who by in consequences of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and to do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, our desires, our thoughts, our hopes, our dreams. That is Ephesians 3.20 in the Amplified Version. Today we can see the glory of God revealed to us in the person of Jesus. God who first ordered light to shine in the darkness, it says, has flooded our hearts with his light so that we can enlighten men with the knowledge of the glory of God as we see it in the face of Jesus. Then as our vision is filled with him, we can reveal his glory to others wherever we may go. Then in verse 6 of this beautiful Psalm 63, David says, On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. You know, when we are in a wilderness time of our lives, sometimes sleep evades us and we toss and we turn upon our bed trying to bring on the desired sleep. Often in the nighttime when we are wakeful, our minds go back to the past and the memories flood our thinking. Our memory seems to work overtime at night. For some of us, we are what I call on the night shift when sleep will not come. But David had remembered the wonderful things God had done for him and pondered on God's wonderful kindness to him. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. I guarantee you that when you can't sleep, get up and read the Bible. Get up and start praying. Get up and praising God you will find yourself sleepy after a while. How dear life is to us. We make every effort to prolong it and care for it. But David believed that the loving kindness of God was better than life itself. In the barren places of our lives, in times of helplessness, we too can experience God's loving kindness. As we recognize all that God has and is doing for us, what joy it will bring into our lives. When we can't sleep, how often we begin to think of all the things we have to do or we worry about our problems. But David had learned a wonderful way of spending his sleepless hours at night. He had a wonderful night shift occupation. He remembered God. He meditated on him. He prayed. His experiences with God were real. Thinking of him in the night watches brought him joy, and I'm sure it brought him peace. He said, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, that's when I have peace, and that's when I have joy. Remembering God is a wonderful occupation for our sleepless nights. We can think of all that he has done for us and meditate meditate upon who he is. Instead of counting sheep, the old saying is, count our blessings. Number them one by one. As we do this, our hearts will be filled with praise. What sweet times we can have with him in the quietness of the night. What peace he will bring to us. It may be he has some special word to share with you for encouragement and comfort in the night watches. Or it may be a gentle admonition. Meditation is not dependent on books, methods, or on our own efforts. We are to meditate and think on Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes when I cannot sleep, I have this little formula that I do. I take the alphabet and I go and start with the letter A. And I use a word that to me proclaims the goodness of God like God is almighty God is beautiful God is courageous God is divine I go through the whole alphabet just praising God for who he is so in the barren and the dry places of your life beloved and in your wilderness experiences or in your sleepless nights let your meditation of him be sweet for he is ever with you wherever you go and however long you stay You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor, 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, 
contact Sky High Radio at 417-451-5636. The world is in chaos. You're here for a purpose. What does the Bible have to say about it all? I'm Mark Taylor, host of Cross Point podcast and radio show, and I'd like to invite you to join me each week as I navigate the complexities of faith, culture, and personal growth. Each week, I interview a different guest who is making an impact on the culture of for God's kingdom. Whether you're seeking spiritual guidance, true information, or a fresh perspective, this podcast equips you to discern truth in today's chaotic world. When Christianity intersects with everyday life, that's where you'll find Crosspoint, sometimes discussing the issues that some churches don't want to talk about. Look up Crosspoint with Mark Taylor wherever you get your podcast produced by KNEO Radio and the Sky High Podcast Network.